Hi, I'm Ashley Dunn here with Creative Company. I am so excited because I'm joined by the beautiful and lovely and talented Karen Moore, star of BET's hit show, The Oval. Karen, how are you? You look fabulous. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time. How are you? I'm pretty good. You know, given our circumstances, I am pretty good. And thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. I'm so, we talked recently, but I, I love talking to you. You have so much wisdom. I love your story. I love your journey. Um, I first want to start off by saying congratulations are in order for you. Season three pickup, and we're going to talk all about that, but congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's been a blessing. <laughs> The show deserves its flowers, so I can't wait to dive in. Um, I want to first um, talk about March is Women Histories Month, um, a month in which we recognize the contributions and the work, um, endless contributions and work of women. Um, you've carved out a successful path for yourself, um, starting in Detroit as a child actor to working in corporate America to back to acting again. Um, your journey is one that is awe-inspiring to other women, to myself included. Your path was not linear, though, by any means. Um, but nevertheless, she persisted. <laughs> and Karen, I want to ask you if you can speak to your career path um, and what it took to get to where you are today. It took a lot of long nights crying. No, I... <laughs> Like you said, I started out in a corporate environment. So mm -hmm. uh, even prior to that college, I went to school for um, psychology, biology. I was pre-med, pre-physical therapy. So, and very much an introvert as I am today. People don't realize that about me, but I never really had the desire to go into performing as a career. You know, I did so as a child, but, you know, as a career, I... I thought I would, you know, I'm from the Midwest, you know, right. we, we, we do, you know, blue collar type jobs or, or just, you know, regular corporate job. It, 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 I don't come from an envi a creative environment necessarily. Right. So um, it, it was something that was just, I think it was, it was meant for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was blessed to realize that there was a voice inside. I listened to the voice inside of me telling me to, you know, pursue the path mm -hmm. to the career. I, st I started out after college, went to a television news broadcasting, a television news broadcasting program at Spex Howard School of Media Arts in Southfield, Michigan. And there, um, one of my instructors encouraged me to seek out a talent agent, which I was not really excited about, but he said, you know, just trust me. And I did, and the rest is kind of history. You know, I got bitten by the bug and I booked a lot straight out the gate. Mm -hmm. um, I linked up with a wonderful mentor in Detroit. She's uh, got deep roots in the theater world. And so that's where I started in the theater world and commercial television commercials. Mm -hmm. And eventually over the course of about maybe five years, I decided to make the move to Atlanta because the market was bigger. And so here I am today. <laughs> here we are. And I have to ask you, you know, when you made that move to Atlanta and even in your process of getting the agent while you were still at school, in your process or your season of waiting, what practices did you adopt, you know, for your own, <laughs> you know, mental stability and just for your own will to continue to keep going? What, what did you, what, what practices did you adopt in your season of waiting? Because I know it probably, and I've heard many stories where, you know, actors talk about that time where they weren't looking anything, but they were still in the process of pursuing, which was then preparing them for their moment. And I want to ask you the same. What, what practices did you adopt in that time of waiting? I tried to stay in the craft. So if I wasn't working, I tried to do something that was related, whether it be a master class or a class or coaching, something along those lines to keep myself uh, engaged. Right. Uh, you know, there's always something to learn. You'll always be a student of this craft. And so I just try to keep myself, you know, immersed in it in that way. And, you know, there are mental health, <laughs> mental health practices that I had to adopt, you right. know, because it, it, it can be unhealthy. You know, you're, there's so much rejection. There's so much, um, that people don't necessarily tell you about, you know, you hear about it, but you don't really understand it until you experience it. Right. And for me, like I said, I booked a lot straight away as soon as oh. I got an agent. 
the first no I got devastated me. The very first I went out, I believe it was for uh, the Color Purple Touring Company, Mm. whatever company that was at the time. And (laughs) I won't blame anybody for my audition, but you know, something went really wrong in my audition. And I'm not sure that it was all my fault, but it completely crushed me. And it took me a while to recover from that. But, you know, I'm glad that I had supportive people around me and people in the in the industry and my mentor. She's just like, listen, you, you got to get it together. You have to toughen up, you know, get some thick skin because that's what this is. Right. You know, you're going to get so many more no's than, than yeses. And so you just have to embrace the process. Mm. And speaking of your mentor, um, and as we talked about uh, March being Women History Month, who are some women in your life, Karen, who have inspired and do inspire you, you know, to be the badass woman that you are? Who are the women in your life that, you know, you can text or you're on the group text with that inspire you and keep you going? Well, you know, um, the matriarchs of my family, uh, my my grandmother and I were really close. She, she passed about a year ago, um, mm-hmm. but we were really close and I was always able to connect with her anytime I started doubting myself. And she, and she's, she was just so wonderful. She was always so encouraging and always full of love. And, you know, my mother and my aunts, they're always there for me. My girlfriends uh, are ride or die. And it's interesting, you know, it's really interesting because most of my girlfriends are not in the entertainment industry. So they're, while they're happy for me and they're supportive of me, um, they don't, they, they view it as a job. Mm-hmm. So they don't, they don't get, you know, the, the fandom is not there for them. They're just like, okay, we're happy for you. Are you coming to dinner or not? You know, kind of thing. And so they keep me really grounded and I'm so grateful to them for that because, you know, like I said, in this world, it, there's so many, there's so many things that can take you outside of yourself right? and to have people around you who can keep you grounded and just to keep you um, focused on things outside of the industry when you're not working is really Mm -hmm. important. I think that that's so important. That's so good. I want to ask you, Karen, just, you know, knowing your career journey and your path, what advice can you share with the viewers wanting to pursue an unconventional career? Maybe it's not acting, but it's, you know, being a chef or it's something that's not corporate America, right? So it's not the norm. It's not a typical career. What advice would you share with viewers on, you know, how to even get started and just how to keep going? Uh, Initially, what I would say is to find someone you can connect with, like I said, as a mentor, Mm -hmm. because we all need somebody. None of us can do any. any, We can't do life alone. So, you know, to have someone who's traveled the road um, to confide in that person would make it probably a little bit easier for you to travel. Um, Be prepared for a lot of rejection you know, and you have to be persistent. You have to love what it is you're doing. I don't think that anyone who is successful in this business, um, I I don't think you can't love it because, because like I said, it's so difficult at times. You have to, you have to have some sort of emotional connection to it. So I, I, I believe that if there's something someone wants to do, they really have to genuinely love it in order to stay with it because the road will not necessarily be easy. Um, And for me, and this is an unpopular approach, probably there is no, there was no plan B. Mm. This was the plan. That's good. This was the plan. Now there were things that I did along the way just to help me get, you know, to the next step. You know, I took, I I left my corp, my comfortable corporate job and took a job in retail and did freelance makeup and whatever I needed to do to get to the next point. But those were just ancillary, you know, ancillary tracks. There was no plan B. Mm -hmm. This was it. And people used to ask me all the time, what if this, what if this doesn't work out for you? It has to. Oh, just has to. And so that focus has to be there, I think. Mm, that you just ministered to me. You preached the word to me. <laughs> that was a really good care. And you talked about your mentor, and I keep hearing you speak about your mentor. How did you get your mentor? Because so many people are like, where do I start? How what is the how do you set up and how do you reach out? How do you get your mentor that's been so pivotal in your life and your career? 
Again, very unconventional. Uh-huh. There was a, there was a, a theater production, musical production called Menopause. I don't know if you're familiar with it or if you've ever heard of it, but it was really popular. I don't know if it's still running. I'm sure it is somewhere. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> I went to see this production in Detroit and there was this woman who was larger than life on stage. And her mm-hmm. name is Rhonda English. She'll probably kill me for even mentioning it, but her name is Rhonda English. And I absolutely, I absolutely adore. I fell in love with her the first time I laid eyes on her. There was just, you know, sometimes there's just an energy about people that attracts you to them. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't necessarily seeking a mentor, mm-hmm. but when I when I saw her perform, I'm just like. I have to know her. And I literally stalked her. I stalked her. I stalked her. And then I finally got to a point where we um, happened to be in the same room together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got all my, my guts up to, to approach her. And I said, listen, I have been following your career. I am such a huge fan. And I know this sounds weird. And I promise I'm not a weirdo but I would really, really love for you to mentor me. And initially she just looked at me like, look girl, move on (laughs) right but she was very gracious she's just like okay well what do you want me to do I'm just like teach me your ways you know (laughs) so so, yeah so it was an unconventional type of thing but you know we did it it was organic It, it was it was weird probably initially just because I I stalked her but there was something about her that I knew um I just wanted to be connected with Right. And she was, she was so gracious and she, she was willing, thank God. And, you know, she, she helped me along the path to, um, to where I am now. So I'm going to ask again, advice to those seeking a mentor, don't get in your head about it. If you, what? No, I mean, listen, you have to be fearless. Mm -hmm. This is the type of industry. And I think, you know, I think in in anything you really want to do, you have to be fearless. If it's yeah. something that you want, you cannot be afraid or timid to ask for help. You, you, you just can't be. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone that you know that, that you want to be connected to, your shame has to go out of the window. Your pride has to go out of the window. Um, and, and not to say that you have to grovel before anybody, but you know, if, if there's something that you think someone can offer you and they're willing to do it, just, you know, try your best to connect with that person. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't know a conventional way to find a mentor. I would, mm-hmm. I would venture to say, you know, you just hang around in, in, in the circles in your industry and, you know, you, you run into people and you connect with people organically, but you just, you, you can't be afraid. Ooh, I know. Look, <laughs> Karen, you need to write a book because these are gems and tips that you're dropping that people really need and people don't, you would be surprised. At when you said be fearless, people are afraid. People are afraid to take the risk and to step off the porch, if you will. So I think that that's good. I think that will help somebody for sure. Well, you, well, you know, I, I think I, I mentioned before, I'm, I am an introvert. I am a true introvert. So, you know, the idea of networking and so forth is not, oh, it, it's, it's, it's not something that I enjoy doing, but you know, you got to do what you got to do, you know, to get to where you need to get. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things. Like I said, just be fearless. Mm-hmm. You have be to do fearless. It. If nothing else, be fearless. I yes. love it. We're wrapping up Black History Month. Um, and I want to ask you, um, what role does being a Black woman play in how you show up in life? Like, what role does that play for you? You know, I think Black women in general feel a sense of responsibility to each other and to our community, to the black mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're the matriarchs of our community and in and, and many respects, we hold it up on our shoulders. You know, we, we support our men, we, we, we take care of our children. And so um, representation is so important, especially now. You know, when I was growing up, there weren't very many images uh, on television or in the industry that that I could relate to. There weren't very many women who looked like me. So I, I didn't know that, you know, being inside that box on the, on the TV, that was a real thing. Like I, that's, that's an attainable, but like it, it wasn't something that registered with me. So I think representation is important and as volatile. I say this all the time, as volatile as the character Victoria is, yeah. I think it's still important that, you know, people, um, especially young girls and young women, 
people who want to get into the industry or whatever, they see it. You have to, you have to see it so that you know that it's possible. So, you know, I think, you know, like I said, black women, we have a sense of responsibility to uh, our communities and to, and to those of, to the, to the young women who look up to us, um, to, to, to represent, to show up and to, um, to just display a positive image, even like I said, if it isn't in, in the character that you portray, you right. know, you have a platform. So, right. you know, you're responsible for using that for good. And Karen, you definitely show up <laughs> in your fullness as First Lady Victoria on the Oval, which we love to see it. We love it. And as I mentioned, the Oval has been renewed for a third season. I'm not surprised at all. Um, with the success of season one and season two, heating up our screens, season two now heating up our screens. I have to ask you, given everything that's going on, are you blown away by the success of this show? Are you like having moments where you're by yourself and you're tripping out? Like, I can't believe that this is really like happening. It is very, it's very surreal. Mm -hmm. I never (laughs) imagined. I never imagined that I would be in this. I mean, I guess you can't know where you're going to land, you know, but right. it, this, this, it, the experience has been so surreal, you know, with a new show, you never really know how people are going to respond to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, of course, Tyler knew he's just like, oh, don't worry right. about it. He's going to love it. But, you know, for me, this is my first time out in a lead role. And, and, and there was a concern. I'm just like, okay, well, are people going to like the show? Are people going to like my character? Are people going to be open to me? You right. know? So, um, it, like I said, it's very surreal and I'm grateful for everyone who has supported the show. I'm grateful to Tyler for offering me this opportunity. I'm grateful to my castmates for being amazing and supporting and just good people overall. And um, it, 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 it's it's an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world. And Karen, we're grateful for you for showing up as you do um, in this role. What was your first impression when you read the script for First Lady Victoria? What did you think when you had the script and you read the first couple of lines? What what went through your mind? What did you think? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> you know, Victoria kind of jumps off the page at you, mm-hmm. and it took me a second because you know, to read to read the script as it was or as it was presented to me or the sides when I got the audition. Right. Um, it would be really easy to to and have an interpretation of her as an angry black woman okay and so when i first read it i'm just like i don't know if i want to touch that or i don't know if i can embody this but then i thought and i and i had some conversations with some actor friends of mine i'm just like you know the character could be this or she could be something you know, more layered, something, right. something more complex. And that's what I tried to bring to the character. I just didn't want to come in, you know, screaming. She's, <laughs> she is, um, she's, she's layered. She is complex. She is, yes, she is angry. Mm-hmm. But anger comes from somewhere, you know, she just did, she wasn't, didn't, she didn't show up to the world angry, you know, right. so everyone has a story. Right. Um, Tyler and I had conversations about her and her volatility and he's like don't judge her don't judge her and Mm -hmm. you know actors were always taught not to judge the character and I had to get to a point where I wasn't judging her that Mm -hmm. I was just um I was embodying her story so you know I'm just a vessel that's good because people would think that you would read the script and as I'm preparing for our interview and I'm you know I'm wondering when you read the script that you were, were you like, oh, like you said, I don't know if I can do it. But you said, no, you said, well, she could be, it could be this. So did you go into it putting your, even though the script was written, bringing a piece of what to it? Did you pull it from, where did you draw inspiration from? Her? <laughs> Is she people that you know or that you come across in your life? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Some of Victoria is is definitely some of that. You know, uh, there are pieces of me, and I'll, I'll say this: mm-hmm. 
portraying her has been somewhat therapeutic because there are pieces of me that I have discovered in her that I don't like and I had to deal with. So oh. I've been in counseling, you know, That's unpacking right. that stuff. But right. yeah, there are people uh, who I definitely used as a reference point for her pain, right? Uh, for her anguish, for her... Um, just for her personality overall, you know, hurt people, hurt people. And we all know those people, you right. know, sometimes we've been that person. That person. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, a, as a basis for the character, I had to find her at a, at a human level. And so, you know, there were, you know, places, real places that I pulled from. And then I went into the entertainment world and, you know, Dynasty and Diane Carroll, who was also fabulous. <laughs> and I'll say Maleficent, um, Disney's Maleficent uh, and Lena Jolie's character, because she, she, on the surface, she appears to be one thing. She appears mm -hmm. to be evil and, but, but she, but she isn't, she's really complex and she's been hurt. And so mm -hmm. she, she lives her life, um, as a result of her experiences. And, you know, that's just our human nature. Wow. That, that's good. How would you describe the process of becoming First Lady Victoria? So when you arrive to set, what is the process when you arrive to getting into character and you know leaving Karen, leaving her behind and getting into full character? What's the process of becoming First Lady? I get really quiet. I have to get to a really quiet space. And um, I hate to use this word, but I, I have to, Ch channel her have to channel her energy you know and part of that is the the hair and makeup process because I don't think that you know I I don't think I look like Victoria and people when they meet me in person they're just like oh you're typically I wear my hair natural and I don't mm -hmm. wear much makeup, you know so it's just like I'm, I'm not her and right. so um she is actually in some ways every day we're on set created and, you know, I have my hair and makeup team help me mm. put her together. And so, you know, the more, the further along they are in the process, the more and more I feel connected to the character, the more I look like, appear to be like her, the more I feel connected to her. Wow. So that's interesting that hair and makeup does play a part, even in our everyday lives, right? Yeah, you know? absolutely. I, yeah. That's, that's good. Given your role, Karen, as a series lead on the show, do you ever feel pressure to deliver, you know, for the fans, for, <laughs> for yourself? Do you feel the pressure and the weight? Because, it's, you know, the show is successful. People love the show. Do you feel that weight? And how do you deal with it and move, you know, push past it? Um, there's definitely a pressure. <laughs> I mean, uh, being the female lead on the show is, is like I said, this is my first opportunity at, at this. And there is an immense amount of pressure because, you know, now we have fans and, you know, I, I want to, to, I want to be the best castmate I can be. I want to be, you know, what my director expects of me, right. I want to be what the fans want, you know, and I want to stay true to my craft. Mm -hmm. you know? So there are so many elements and, you know, it's, 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 it's a thing where I just really have to focus and, and not, and be forgiving. You know, I, <laughs> I have to be uh, kind to myself because, right. you know, none of us are perfect, but no. you know, I, I try to bring, 100% of myself. I show up every day and, and bring everything I have and hope that that is good enough to, um, to bring everything together and to make everybody feel safe and happy and uh, supportive of the project. Wow. Um, considering the nuanced, volatile character that you play in the Oval, Karen, do you ever find yourself bringing your character home unintentionally? Mm -mm, like, mm -mm. Are you like at home and are you channeling all oh, Victoria at home on the phone or just do you but unintentionally, right? Because that's your work. Do you find yourself bringing work home? I don't. You don't? I do not. No, really? I do not. I, I, when just, just as Victor Victoria is um, kind of assembled at the top of the day, uh -huh. She is disassembled by the time, <laughs> you know, I, I hit the bed. Like I, I can't, 
I can't carry that energy home. And like I said, there were parts of me that I, I was able to relate uh, to Victoria with, and those are things that I had to deal with, but bringing her home into my real life. Mm, You're I'm like, no, I think no. not. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're not going to do that. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, would you call the oval a high point of your career? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there have been so many firsts and so many opportunities that I've gained from from this role. And like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. There's been, been an education in the industry and an education um, just about how to move in, in, in this, this, this world. It's, it's a different, it's, it's difficult to describe, but it's, it's a different experience than, than anything I've ever had. And so, um, yeah, I would say it's, it's a high point. I mean, I, my first big role is a lead role of the show. And I, I don't know what more anyone could ask for. I, I love you. I just absolutely love your spirit. When I first spoke to you and met you and got to, you know, learning about you, I was like, like I said, inspired by your journey, by your story. And just seeing you in this role and in this space, I know that people look at you on screen. And even though the character is, not the most friendly character. She's somebody, right? She's somebody that's represented, that's out there. And like you said, she has a story. Um, this season is comprised of 22 episodes. We're already, I believe, three episodes in. What will the rest of this season look like? Oh my gosh, it is an insane roller coaster. Um, there will be a surprise and a cliffhanger after at at the end of each episode, and mm -hmm. just like first season, I mean, I don't think the fans will be disappointed. And with every episode, you know, Tyler turns up the heat just a little bit more. So you'll see um, a lot more character development for all of the characters and and the stories that follow them. You'll you'll see a lot more development there. Um, for Victoria, you'll see a different side of her. Uh, mm -hmm. She's still messy, Victoria, but <laughs> we all love. <laughs> Let's be real, right? But um, you know, you'll you'll see a different side of her. You you'll see how how her love triangle with Sam and Priscilla pans out. That's really interesting. <laughs> but um, yeah, I th I think the audience can look forward to seeing so much more of uh, even the 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 staff mm -hmm. and following you know the staff home the white house staff their their story is going to be developed a lot more and i think you're seeing that uh with the first episode with richard and nancy and what's transpired in, in their marriage and barry still looking for his daughter but it, the story is moving <laughs> forward and it's just becoming more and more interesting do you ever do you guys are you guys allowed to bring your input at all to the writers to Tyler or you know to say I think we should try it a little bit like this or I think she would do it like this or how does that work yeah you know things move so fast mm -hmm. on our set mm -hmm. um sometimes yes and sometimes no just because of the timing of it but because we receive most of our scripts in advance Right. You know, we all have an opportunity to, you know, to to go to Tyler and say, hey, can we talk about this? Or, hey, what do you think about? This? So, yes, we do have an opportunity to do that sometimes. But, right. you know, then there are changes that happen and things move so fast in the world of Tyler Perry. Sometimes we don't have an opportunity to address that in the ways that we would like to. Um, so we just we just give our interpretation the best we can. Right, and you guys do a good job at that. You guys are set to resume filming for season three later this year. Um, do you anticipate it will be different from last year when you guys had the camp, um, what was it, what did you call it, Camp Ferry or Camp? Camp Quarantine. Camp Quarantine. Yeah. Do you anticipate it'll be different though this time, Karen, due to the vaccine and, you know, many people are getting vaccinated. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I think that, <sighs> I don't anticipating it being very much different just because the vaccine is so new and so right. many of us have not had access to it just yet. Right. Uh, I think that, you know, if we're blessed enough to see another season, yes. then, you know, we'll see some change with that. But, you know, Tyler is still very 
um, very cautious and very protective of his cast and crew. Right. And so, you know, I, I think we'll do another camp quarantine type situation and it'll be very similar to what it was for season two. What do you hope viewers take away each week when they watch the show? I just want their wigs to be blown back. You know, I just, I just, you know, I, I want for people to be shocked. I want for, because we are dealing with so much with, right. with, with the pandemic, with social unrest, with political, we, we have so many, um, so much heaviness around us. Right. The escapism of the oval is, is, is so beautiful to me. I mean, as, as wild and crazy as it is, it does give us an opportunity to kind of check out for a minute and just tune into something that, you know, has nothing to do with what's going on around us. Definitely. Um, and you also are in DC Stargirl, which I absolutely love. Karen, you play Dr. Bridget Chapel um, on DC Stargirl, a complete opposite role from what you play on the Oval. What is this, um, show how does this show and this role resonate with you it, it like like you said it is completely opposite from from uh the role that i play on the oval and it's you know it's a welcome <sighs> It's a, it's a welcome difference because, you know, people have an opportunity to see me in a different light. They have an opportunity to see my craft in a, in a different manner and a different environment. And um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, it's different. I have a lot of fun on set. Mm -hmm. The cast and crew are amazing. Uh, we were just shooting recently and I can't tell you how, Jeff Johns is the showrunner for the right. show. And right. when I tell you he's such an amazing person, I mean, he's he's so down to earth. He's so approachable. He's from Detroit. Mm -hmm. And, you know. <laughs> Calm down. Right. So we, we have somewhat of a connection there, but he's he's just a really um, awesome person to work with and, and the entire cast and crew as well. I can't, I can't wait um, to see you back on screen in that show. I love you in that show. Um, I want to talk a little bit before I go, because I think I'm over time. I think I, think I am. Already? I think so, Karen. I think I am. Um, I want to ask you a few more questions. Self-care. Given all the incredible things that you have going on and that you get to do, how do you take time and when do you take time for yourself? I have to carve out time. Like okay. I, I, yeah, it has to be an intentional thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I have a new bathtub. <laughs> and so I got it for the first time. Yes, I got it for the first time this week. And it was so lovely. I mean, oh my gosh, there's nothing like, uh, you know, a nice hot bath, candles, you know, it's, it, it was, yeah. So that, I mean, so, you know, I, I, I have small pleasures that, you know, that, that fuel me, mm -hmm. that fuel me. I'm sorry. You mm -hmm. know, I, I do manicures and pedicures. I get, you know, I, I, I do that type of self-care. And also, you know, there's a mental health component where, you know, I have always been, um, I guess, kind of a people pleaser. Mm, same. Yeah. Right. Ooh. And, and understanding that about myself, not only a people pleaser, but an empath, I'm highly sensitive. And so it, Complete, yeah, so you can relate to that. So being an actor, it's it's kind of difficult sometimes being an empath mm -hmm. because you take on everybody's energy. You feel, you literally feel everything. And people who, who are not empathic don't quite understand what that's like, but it can be training. And so what I've learned to do is to carve out a little bit of time for myself to do whatever it is I want to do, whether it be read a book, take a nap, take a bath, you know, take a walk, play with my dog, whatever it is. Right. And also the power of no. Mm. Yeah. I've learned to say no and not feel guilty about it. Right. You know, I give so much of myself to people. I give so much of myself to the world. Right. I deserve to reserve something for myself. So I, you know, I have learned the power of no. Yes, you do. What stories do you want to tell next? What's next for you? I know we need some music, right? But what stories do you want to tell next? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. You know, and it's, and it's so interesting because uh, re, uh, probably about two or three years ago, someone asked me that very question. And I said, oh, you know what? I want to play in a superhero production. 
Star you girl. Like, you know, put it out into the universe. You know? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, um, I, I would like to, I would like to do um, maybe a biopic <sighs> of, you know, of a popular, uh, strong black female uh, influencer in, in, yeah, I, I think I think a biopic would 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 be wonderful, and I, I won't say you know who. You know, I was gonna ask. Yeah. <laughs> I won't who say who. I don't want to go there just yet, but I think okay. that you know I would love to um, immerse myself in another actress's world just to see what it's like to walk in her sh- or another you know another black woman's you know world to see what it's like to walk in her shoes from her, her perspective. Mm. Who would play you in a biopic in the story Ooh. of your life? Who would play you? Who Good would you want? question. Uh, if I had to choose someone, I'd probably say Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh yeah, I can see that. Totally. She is my kindred, yeah, she is my kindred spirit in my soul. Like people don't realize how how fun loving I am because like I said, I'm kind of introverted, but you know, once I kind of let my guard down and I get comfortable, I'm like a total goofball. And people don't know that because you know they see Victoria. And right. Like, I'm right. not Victoria. I'm no, not- you are not. That's the character. That's your character. Right. Karen, this was so good. I know I'm over time. I have so many messages today. But I just want to say, again, I absolutely adore you. I absolutely love your spirit, the energy that you bring on screen and off. And I feel like I can't wait to see what you do next. Everything that you've been a part of is beautiful, magical, and again, inspirational. So thank you for leading the path for us women that are looking at you and seeing you represent us on screen. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Ashley. I... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.